Canto 9 Circle 6 The Heretics Synopsis At the gates of Dis the poets wait in dread. Virgil tries to hide the anxiety from Dante, but both realize that without divine aid they will surely be lost. To add to their terrors, three infernal furies, symbols of eternal remorse, appear on a nearby tower from which they threaten the poets and call for Medusa to come and change them to stone. Virgil at once commands Dante to turn and shut his eyes. To make doubly sure, Virgil himself places his hands over Dante's eyes, where there is an evil upon which man must not look if he is to be saved. But at the moment of great anxiety, a storm shakes the dirty air of hell, and the sinners in the marsh begin to scatter like frightened fro frogs. The heavenly messenger is approaching. He appears walking majestically through hell, looking neither to right or left. With a touch he throws open the gates of Dis, while his words scatter the rebellious angels. Then he returns as he came. The poets now enter the gate unopposed and find themselves in the sixth circle. Here they find countryside like a vast cemetery. Tombs of every size stretch out before them, each with its lid lying beside it, and each wrapped in flames. Cries of anguish sound endlessly from the entombed dead. This is the torment of the heretics of evil cult. By heretic, Dante means specifically those who did violence to God by denying immortality. Since they taught that the soul dies with the body, so their punishment is an eternal grave in the fiery morgue of God's wrath. Text my face had paled to a mask of cowardice when I saw my guide turn back. The sight of the sooner brought the color back to his. He stood apart like one who strains to hear what he cannot see, for the eye could not reach far across the vapors of the midnight air. Yet surely we were meant to pass these tombs, he said aloud. If not, so much was promised. Oh, how time hangs and drags till our aid comes. I saw too well how the words with which he ended covered his start, and even perhaps I drew a worse conclusion from that than he intended. Tell me, Master, does anyone ever come from this first ledge whose only punishment is hope cut off into this dreary bottom? I put this question to him, still in fear of what his broken speech might mean, and he rarely did any of us enter here. Once before, it is true, I crossed through hell, conjured by cruel Eratho, who recalled the spirits to their bodies. Her dark spell forced me, newly stripped of my mortal part, to enter through this gate and summon out the spirit from Judica. Take heart, that the last depth, the darkest lair, that the farthest from heaven, which encircles all, and at that time I came back even from there. The marsh from which the stinking gases bubble lies all about this capital of sorrow, whose gates we may now not pass without trouble. All this and more he expounded, but the rest was lost on me. For suddenly my attention was drawn to the torrent with a fiery crest, where all once three hellish and inhuman furies sprang to view, blood-stained and wild. Their limbs and their gestures hinted they were women. Belts of greenish hydras wound and wound about their waist, and snakes of horned serpents grew from their heads like matted hair and bound their hard brows. My master who well knew the handmaidens of the Queen of Woe, cried, Look, the terrible Arianas of Hectate's crew, 
that is Mangora, to the left of the tower. Electo is the one who raves in the right. Testaphone stands between, and then he said no more. With their palms they beat their brows, and their nails they clawed their bleeding breast, and such man wails, such mad wails, broke from them, that I drew close to the poet, overawed, and altogether screamed, looking down at me, Call Medusa, that we may change him to stone. Too lightly we let Thesus go free. Turn your back and keep your eyes shut tight, for should the Gorgon come, you would look at her. Never again would you return to the light. This was my guide's command, and he turned me about himself, and would not trust my hands alone, but with his placed on mine held my eyes shut. Men of sound intellect and probably wait with good understanding what lies hidden beyond the veil of my strange allegory. Suddenly there broke on the dirty swell of the dark marsh a squall of terrible sound that set tremor through both shores of hell, a sound as if two continents of air, one frigid and one scorching, clashed heads on in a war of winds that stripped the forest bare, ripped off whole bows, and blew the helter-skelter along the range of dust it raised before the making of the beast and shepherds run for shelter. The master freed my eyes. Now turn, he said, and fix your nerve of vision on the foam there where the smoke is thickest and most acrid. As frogs before the snake that hunts them down churds up their ponds in flight into the last squalls of the bottom, as if turned to stone. So I, more than a thousand ruined souls, scattered away from one who crossed dry shod this stagnant mosh into hell's burning boughs. With his left hand he fanned away the dreary vapors of the sink as he approached, and only of the annoyance did he seem wary. Clearly he was a messenger from God's throne, and I turned to my guide, but he made me a sign that I should keep my silence and bow down. Ah, uh, what scorn breathed from the angel's presence! He reached the gates of Dis, and with a wand he waved it open, for there was no resistance. Outcast of heaven! You twice loathsome crew, he cried upon the terrible sill of hell. How does this insolence still live in you? Why do you set yourselves against the throne, whose will none can deny, and whose times past had added to your pain for each rebellion? Why do you butt against fate's ordinance? You Cerebus, you recall, still wears his throat, and chin peeled for such arrogance. Then he turned back through the same filthy tide by which he had come. He did not speak to us, but went to his way like one preoccupied by other presents than those before him. And we moved towards the city, fearing nothing after his holy words. Straight through the dim and open gate we entered unopposed, and I eager to learn the new estate of hell whose burning fortress walls enclosed, began to look about. The very moment we were inside, and I saw every hand a countryside of sorrow and, nor and new torment, as at Erlay's, er where Rhone sinks into its stagnant marshes, and Pola by Cornetone Gulf, whose waters close Italy and wash her farthest reaches. The uneven tombs cover the even plains. Such fields I saw here spread in all directions, except that here the tombs were chests of pain. For, in a ring around each tomb, great fires raised every wall to red heat. No smith works better iron in his, for in his forge. The bears stood within the lids upraised, and from their pits the anguished moaning rose on dead air from the desolation of tormented spirits. And I, 
Master, what shades are these who lie buried in these chests, and fill the air with such a painful and unending cry? These are the arch-heretics of all cults, with all their followers who replied, Far more than you would like, than you would think lie stuffed into these vaults, like lies with like in every heresy and the movement are fired, some more, some less, to each depravity of its own degree. He turned then, I, and I followed through the night between the wall and the, tor and the torments, bearing right.